I'm going to show how to create some metal patterns with Finity Photo's Procedural Texture Filter. Um, I created this one with that and I've got some others here that I'm going to show at the end. Um, and if you saw my previous video on making a agate texture, uh, this process is similar to that one. So I've got several copies of the procedural texture here, followed by a gradient map, and then followed by a bump map. So I've got several layers of texturing going on with this. So to get started, I'm going to start with a new uh, document. So let's make it 1024 by 768, and I'm going to fill it with black. So I'm going to start with a new procedural texture. I'm going to do an equation. I'm going to start with a coordinate. VAR V equals vector 2 of Rx from Ry times A divided by W. And like last time, I'm going to replace the XY vector with a noise function. So in this case, I'm going to use the, I think last time I used cell noise, this time I'm going to use Perlin noise as the XY vector. So I have, um, so just the opposite of last time. So I'll call it V2 equals um, vector 2 of Perlin cubic. And that has, I'm uh, going to take V as the input for that one, and then the octaves, and then the smoothness factor. So I'm going to use cell noise 2. And that one I have to separate out the x and y components of the vector. So I'm going to use vector v2 dot x and v2 dot y. And then um, it has another factor. I'm going to just call it b. And that will be the number of lines, actually. And so I'll just start with that. And then I'm going to add some... Uh, noise into this later, but let's see what that looks like. I'll add my custom inputs. I've got to have a scale for A. I have a real value for octaves, that's O. See, so I'll set this one to 6 and this one to 7. And then I'm going to add a slider for the smoothness and I'm going to add a factor B and I'm going to call that lines and I'll set that up to um, 2 and it looks like I forgot a parenthesis here like that okay so I'm going to set these to all white and let's bring this down a little bit um, so when I saw this one, I thought, oh, this is, this looks like it might make a good metal. I'm going to add a little bit of distortion or turbulence to this uh, cell noise. So I'm going to start with um, plus T times DIR of V2 times C. And then outside of this, dot x. And over here, I'm going to have plus t times dir, directional noise, v2 times c, dot y. And I've got to add a value for c, which will be the overall scaling of the noise, and then a value for t, which will be the turbulence. Okay, so that's pretty turbulent. Now I'm going to interpolate between uh, this one and the Perlin cubic. So I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to put a comma and put that in there. Parentheses. Oops, I need to put in um, a fader. Um, 
Okay, so I'll call it f, oops, comma, f, and over here, I'll use SCERP for S-curve interpolation, and then I'll put in my interpolating factor f here. So then I should be able to go from the pure Perlin noise to the Perlin noise with the other input. Next, I just want to scale this up, and so I'm going to uh, multiply by, I'll just call it I1, and then times 2 times this interpolation factor. Turbulence, scale, and then turbulence. And this one is, I'll call this one mix. And then I'm going to have a I1 is just a fader for the function. And then I'm going to also have an offset that I can have go from minus one to one. So I call that off. And I'm just gonna add that out here at the end of everything plus OF. So that way I can you know, take some of this off if I need to. So I'm gonna bring this down now I should be able to adjust it. I don't want any areas that have a lot of all white and a lot of all black in this. All right, and one last thing I want to do is I want to be able to um, change the scaling of the Perlin cubic independent of the other. So I'm going to multiply that times D here and here. So I'm going to put in another real variable D and that way when I crank this up, I can control the scaling of that independently of my main scale factor. And so this I'm going to call Perlin scale, and this one I'm going to call offset. And I'm just going to save this um, as metal test. I've got this saved, so now I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to go over here and add it as a live filter now. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit, move it around a little, and then smooth it out. Maybe like that. And then let's see what my, um, let's see what I can do with my mix. So. Bring this up, bring this down, so I don't have so much. So I don't want any that are too white or too dark. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna close this like that. And then I'm going to go and add a gradient map. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna make try to make this one look like rusty metal. And so I'm sort of thinking from the bottom up here. So I'll start with um, this and make it a dark red color. And I'm looking at a reference image. I'm not gonna show it on screen, but I'm looking at a reference image for this one. Uh, maybe just add a little bit of an orange to that and I think I'll make it even darker. So I'll start with that and then I'm gonna do, let's see, then I'm gonna do this top layer and I'm just gonna make this sort of a very light blue there. And now this one, I'm going to make a orange color and try to get it sort of a rusty orange like that. All right, and then up here, I'm gonna make this just a little bit darker blue. I'm gonna put a rust color right next to it. All right, and then down here, I'm gonna add a little bit of rust in here.
And for this layer, I'm just going to, I'm not too concerned about what it looks like because later on I'm going to have a, I'm going to add another layer on top of this. So this is just the first of several layers. Although I'll use the same gradient map for I guess all of them. And then this one actually has um, some rust. This is sort of like a blue paint in my reference image, and, but I have a little bit of rust showing through and that rust is a little more yellow. So I'm going to put this one, it's going to be the blue color. And then I'll put another blue up here. And this one, I'm going to add a little bit of rust on that one. And I'll probably, we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm going to stop with this now and I'll maybe work with it a little bit more later when I get to my next level. So there's sort of my overall uh, the image doesn't look too, like too much yet. So hopefully I'll have it looking better <laughs> by the time I'm done with this. Now I'm going to add another layer. So I'm going to add another filter. I'm going to use the same uh, one. So I'm going to use the same metal. I'm going to put it down inside of this one like that. And now I'm going to um, adjust this one a little bit. So let's see what I can do with this one on top of the other one. And I'm going to, um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to actually mix these and Looking for a good mix for this. Let's do this overlay, I think. So doing an overlay. Now let's see what I can do with this. So a um, little bit of that. Let's try a little bit of turbulence. Let's increase the uh, scale here. And Let's do that. Oh, and then I can also, I can check this. I can bring this all the way down. And then I'm just gonna bring it in, fade that in and it's interpolating as it brings it in. All right, so I'll leave that on. I'm gonna go back and I'll see if I can adjust this a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to go in and add, I think I will just add the same thing again. One thing I noticed with this software is it adds the, um, uses the same name for all these procedural textures for some reason. So even though you have a different name here, uh, it must be sort of a bug. It shows metal test for anything, even, even if you choose something else. I think it will do that. Uh, I'm going to do, well, I think I will do that one again. And this time I'm going to go up and I'm 
going to do um, make this a rougher surface like that. And then I'm going to blend mode. Uh, let's see which one will look good here. So I'm going to do lighten, and I'm just going to bring this all the way down and bring it up. And decrease this. And I'm going to look at this like that. Probably good. And then I'm going to go back and, uh, oh, I need to do this. Um, I'll put this down here. Up here. There we go. And then I'm going to look at my gradient and I think I'm going to move this over, move this over. And I think I'm going to move this over. Like that. Let's fiddle with this a little bit. Alright. And so I'm going to save this. I'm going to add this. And I'm going to call it uh, Rusty. Like that. And it'll show up over here under Adjustments. But if you don't see this Adjustment uh, tab over here, you can add that by going up to Window, at least in Windows. And then here it is. Make sure there's a check by that. And then you'll be able to see those um, things that you saved over there. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to now, and I'm going to add a little bit of a bump map to this to add a little bit more um, effect to this. And it may not look... I could probably spend a long time working on this. Actually, I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. I think I want to get a little bit of darker color in here. Okay, it's getting good and rusty now. Now I'm going to add um, a bump map to this so it looks a little more pitted. And I should probably redo my bump maps so they're a little more complicated than they are. But for this one, I'm just going to add the... Um, so you go to lighting and just add the purlin bumps. They look like that. And I think let's make them a little bit orange for this thing because that maybe will help. And I'm going to change the direction of the light so they look like it's dented in here. And I'm going to increase this and let's see how that looks. And I'm going to go to apply this and I'll look at which one looks good. So not that one. Um, and I'll back it off later. Um, usually, let's see. So I think the uh, soft light will probably look pretty good. Yeah, I think soft light is going to be have to be the one. So now I'm going to... I gotta increase my surface height so I have a little bit. Sorry, decrease that. So it looks nice and rough. I think I'll bring this up to maybe like 200. Uh, that's maybe too much. And if I was clever, I could maybe get it out of this area. But we'll leave it there. It's sort of bubbling up on the surface. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and see how this looks. And so that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so I think I'll call that good. And then if I want to save a sort of a snapshot of this, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. And it's, um, I only had 1024 by 768, so it's not super high res here, but uh, that's that. So now if I want to do a snapshot, I just go to layer and merge visible and it sort of saves one up here but i'm going to go back to my other document and show some of the 
metals I came up with. So this was sort of the first one I did, sort of a rusty light metal, or maybe that's paint on there. And then um, I did this cast iron like that. And then I did one that's just looking at the bottom of a copper pan that had sort of a lot of um, wear on it. And then I wanted to do one for brass. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit on that one. And then I thought sort of like an aged brass like this. And I tried to put some dents in. I could probably, you know, fix up these a little bit so they look a little more realistic like dents in there. But uh, that's all I've got so far. And um, let me know if you have any comments or questions. And thanks for watching.